The story begins with Yin's boyfriend returning home and immediately heading to the agency, raising his cap, he declares that his future bride would be waiting for him. The guy walks into the agency with a smile and waves to the manager standing at the counter at the entrance. Waving her cap on her finger, Yin tries to find the security department among the numerous doors. Opening the door with a carefree smile, the guy apologizes for being late. All the guards with gloomy faces turned their attention to the new guy entering the department. A senior in the department noticed that Ian was late on his first day of work. With folded hands, the senior guard asks if this is the same Ian Ziyu who returned from abroad, holding the back of his head, the guy confirms the boss's words, adding that he has not yet adjusted to the new time zone. Taking out an expensive pack of cigarettes, Ian asks the senior guard to take care of him, the man notices that the cigarettes Ian bought were Chinese. The man, without any explanation, knocks a pack of cigarettes out of the guy's hands. The senior guard adds that they cannot afford such expensive cigarettes, Ian doesn't quite understand what we're talking about. One of the subordinates asks the senior why he is so lenient towards the new guy. The man adds that Yin's visit makes the department shine with new colors, with a serious face, Ian slowly walks towards the senior guard. The man notices this and begins to get a little nervous, the rest of the guards, not paying attention to this, continue to laugh at what is happening. Ian looks down at the senior guard, making him completely lost. The man, turning pale in thought, noticed that the guy was not simple and all this might not end well. Ian weakly hits the man on the shoulder with a smirk, the senior guard was absolutely frightened by what was happening. At this moment, unknown men enter the department with an appeal to the head of the department, Lee. The girl who came in last clarifies whether the new bodyguard appointed to her by the chairman has arrived. The man fearfully moves away from Ian, adding that he has already arrived, Ian turns to look at the girl, the guy realizes that he has already met her before. Senior guard Lee lowers his head and greets Miss Song, the girl slowly approaches the man. A man with a frightened face points to the new bodyguard, introducing him by the name of Ian. Ian looks at the girl in confusion hoping that he won't get fired on his first day of work. The girl realizes that she previously dated a guy, determining if this is the right guy. A few days earlier, Sun is on a plane. The girl sat silently in the passenger seat and read something on her phone, at this moment, Ian passes by without paying attention to Song. In the moment, Ian notices something to the side of her. The guy notices the girl and begins to be very embarrassed by the way she was dressed. Walking further through the cabin, the guy sits down in his seat and ponders what he sees with a smile. Ian recalls that in addition to all this, he noticed one more small thing. The guy rises again and looks towards the girl, Sun continues to sit and not pay attention to the guy. Ian notices the latest high-tech stealth tracker on the girl's clothing, the guy was interested in who the girl was. Sun notices that an unknown guy is staring at her. Ian was already standing opposite the girl and looking at the tracker on the girl's clothes. The girl began to cover herself and was very embarrassed by the guy's ignorant act. The girl screamed loudly calling the guy a pervert, the entire salon sharply turned its head towards the conflict. After the slap, the guy grabbed his cheek, Ian tried to explain his behavior with a smile. Ian quietly adds that he noticed a small tracker on the girl's clothes, son, still not moving away from what happened, does not understand what the guy is talking about. The girl hits the guy below the belt with all her might, calling his explanations complete nonsense. Ian sits on his knees and declares that it is true what he said and if the girl does not believe it, she can examine her clothes herself. The guy asks the girl to remove her hands so that he can show the same tracker, Sun screamed even louder, she tried to call her guards. Several guards were already standing behind Ian and were wondering what happened during their absence. At that moment, several guards take Ian away, the guy shouts that he is not a pervert and that what he said is true. With a grin, the girl noticed that Ian was the same pervert from the plane. Sun adds that if the guy wants to become her bodyguard, then he should die first, the guard slowly surrounded the girl and approached the guy. Ian, with a lost face, explains that it's actually just a misunderstanding. The girl stops and declares that since her father decided so, she will give the guy a chance to improve. With an evil smile, she wondered whether this was in his destiny or not. Numerous guards surround the guy, preparing to punish him, Ian stands up and explains that they still have something to talk about. After the fight begins, Ian immediately manages to dodge the first blow and deliver a painful blow to her opponent. The guy, 
playing with his conflicts, begins to beat them up one by one. Ian, with a smile on his face, continued to fight with opponents outnumbered. Left alone, he finishes off the last guard with his fist. The guy turns to the girl, who is interested, thinks something about it, Ian lets go of the last guard causing him to fall to the ground. Ian saw enough of his skills for the girl, Sun had nothing to say about what was happening. Coming closer and bending down, he declares that today he will now be protected by Sun. Ian quietly calls the girl his bride, Sun was furious, not understanding which bride the guy was talking about. The girl hit the guy in the face again, calling him a pervert. The action moves to the monitoring room. Ian applies a cold bandage to his forehead after a fight, the main security guard invites the guy to dinner in the evening, and also apologizes for today's incident, Ian asks the man not to take everything to heart because for him it is a trifle. The second guard located near the phone adds that the chairman is looking for Inya. The guy slowly comes up to the phone and asks his new boss son about the banquet, adding that today he won't be able to come because he was invited to dinner by the head of the department. The man understands that after this he will not be happy, he asks the guy to retract his words and still come to the banquet with son. Ian immediately corrects the phone conversation and adds that plans have changed and he will be at today's meeting, the man thanks the guy. Ian immediately goes down to the first floor and is observed by the girl at the entrance, the chairman's secretary asks the guy to come to her. The girl asks to go with her in the car, there are a large number of guards standing near the car. Ian doesn't understand why everything is so official, after all, they are just subordinates. Another chairman, having already arrived in the salon, notices that they have disagreements with the Xinghua criminal group, which had already appeared earlier. Ian Sev in the car noticed that the man hired her to guard Song so that she would not fall into the wrong hands, the man explains that he is worried about the girl's safety and based on recommendations, he hired the guy. Without any incidents, the car drove slowly along the given route. Ian wonders why they go out of town to eat, the man explains this by saying that the taste of the Qinghuang group's dishes is completely unique and they should go there. Ian observing the surroundings, believes that they will not be able to eat today. The girl chairman said that there were three cars ahead that were blocking the passage. The man begins to get a little confused, Ian asks if it could be Xinghui, the man confirms that they no longer have any other enemies. Ian asks with a smile if the boss will mind if he goes forward. Ian asks the secretary to get up so he can drive the car. The guy talks about his plans and begins to maneuver very quickly among the cars. The man remarks that he knows the guy has a gun. The Ian of the state is that if they have problems, then he will definitely take advantage and fight back. Ian adds that girls shouldn't be so nervous, because they can't kill. The guy explains that you need to pass all the Xinghua cars as quickly as possible. The guy maneuvers sharply away from all passing cars, keeping them behind. Ian notices that there is one more car left in front of them. One of the bandits with a huge rocket launcher emerges from the hatch on top of the car. Ian was a little confused at what the bandits were trying to do, because it was reckless. The unknown man with an evil grin decides to fire a rocket launcher directly at Yin's car. Ian manages to dodge at the last moment and the explosion is left behind. Ian understands that these are not ordinary bandits, but real mercenaries hired from abroad. A fire extinguisher flies towards the cars where the mercenaries with rocket launchers were located, men immediately pay attention to him. Ian immediately shoots towards the fire extinguisher, hitting it. The fire extinguisher explodes in the air, creating a small smoke screen. Ian decides to drive through while the rest of the mercenaries are inside, confused. Ian notices that they were unable to get away from the chase, there were four more motorcyclists on the guy's tail. The man at the head of the entire gang was very angry with the failed plan. The man realized that he had missed the target for his brother, it was unclear to him where such a skillful bodyguard came from. The head of the company, sitting in the back seat, was absolutely frightened by what was happening. The mercenaries, unable to catch up with the car, decide to fire at it from behind. Ian decides to pull over and drive straight through the forest. The leader among all the mercenaries orders to continue the pursuit. All motorcyclists immediately set off in pursuit through the dense forest. At that moment, Ian jumps from a tree onto one of the motorcyclists. The others stop abruptly when they hear the screams of their partner. All the mercenaries notice Ian standing next to the motorcycle, the guy throws the helmet on the floor of one of the mercenaries. With a grin, Ian turns your head towards the mercenaries, waiting for the next move from those. 
Eam sharply approaches the mercenary who pulled out a pistol, the mercenary manages to shoot, but Eam demolishes him with a cut in the neck. The mercenary soullessly begins to fall to the ground, a small blade was visible on Yin's watch. Eam glances again at the remaining mercenaries. In a moment, all the mercenaries were lying on the ground, soulless, the guy managed to defeat all his pursuers with light movements. The head and his subordinates emerge from the bushes, the man noticed how skillful the guy was. With a smile, Eam declared that there was nothing in his abilities and this effect was due to the weakness of his opponents. At that moment, a bullet flies past Eam, which the guy immediately notices. Eam orders everyone to take cover as a sniper is shooting at them, the mercenary manages to fire another shot, but it missed. Eam, hiding behind a stone, tries to make out the mercenary, the unknown shoots again and hits a stone. The head wonders what Eam will do this time, one of the chapter's guards is also interested in where the guy got the grenade from. Eam explains with a smile that he borrowed it from a motorcyclist. The sniper located among the trees was outraged by Yin's speed. The man again decides to take aim and try to eliminate Eam. Looking through his rifle scope, he watched Eam suddenly run out from behind a stone, it was not clear to the sniper where such skills came from from a simple security guard. The sniper tries to take aim, at this moment, Eam was actively jumping and rushing from side to side, which greatly infuriated the man. The sniper sees that the guy has stopped moving and now he was planning to take the final shot. In the sight, he notices that Eam is pointing upward, the man understood that he won this battle, but it was not clear to him where the guy was pointing. At that moment, the same grenade that Eam had taken earlier from the motorcyclist flew towards the sniper. A loud explosion sounded in the forest, the noise caused many birds to fly into the air. The action moves to a private villa a few hours later. That same sniper reported to his boss about the current situation, the man, sitting on the couch, described the battle as fairly even in which most of the mercenaries broke their limbs and fled. The man also adds that the police were also involved, the man's boss, without being distracted from the game, continued to listen to the sniper. The man calls his boss his brother and adds that he is ready to be punished for what happened. The guy doesn't understand why a man needs to be punished, the man was at a loss why the guy reacted to everything so simply. The man asks if his brother believed it, because in fact Song Zong only has two guards, one of whom was super strong for them. The guy with a calm face adds that they just underestimated the group's bodyguard Ing Huang, explaining this with a quote. The guy begins to stretch, believing that it's all about Xiao Fan. The guy turns to the man with a smile, adding that it only took them six years for Xing Hui to grow from scratch and before that he had seen much more serious difficulties. Coming closer, the guy asks not to worry about his brother's trifles, because Xing Hui is already stronger. The man was inspired by his brother's words, declaring that he would deal with all this himself. The guy takes his glass and asks his brother to find out where Sun's bodyguard came from, the man was ready for any task. The guy with a gloomy face adds that they have enough time to get everything done. Actions are transferred to the Qing Huang company office, Sun loudly declares that they shouldn't talk about this guy. Sun looks out the window, adding that Yin's skills are already clear to her. The girl states that she still adheres to her original opinion about Aina. Sun states that their company does not require this type of employee and she immediately asks the guy to leave, the girl's father demands that Sun shut up. The man asks the girl to calm down and let Inya become her bodyguard. The male secretary thinks in his mind that this is an excellent offer, holding his head, the head realizes that he absolutely cannot be angry with his daughter. The man adds that Ian really has excellent skills and the girl's father won't lie. The girl continues to stand at the window with displeasure, the man also adds that Ian is also the girl's fiancé, who was chosen in early childhood. The girl's face immediately changed because she didn't know this at all. The secretary of the head was no less surprised, repeating what she had heard. The man sitting on the sofa added that this was the decision of Mr. Eam and his father, adding that the guy returned from abroad for the promise given then. The man explains that his father must swear that until Mr. Eam renounces this marriage, he does not have the right to unilaterally break the contract. Eam asks with a smile what the reverse effect of such vows is and why he can't tell him about the secrets. The man calls the guy insightful, explaining that his father once gave the lyncher company 5%, which is now worth 500 million. The man will suggest that if the guy wants to break the contract, then he will have to pay those same 500 million, 
otherwise the guy will still have to pay 500 million for the bride price, Ian realizes that he has returned to pay off his old man's debt. Ian wonders if the man is ready to accept money from abroad, the man proposes another plan for the guy to become his daughter's bodyguard in order to pay off the entire debt. The man finishes his story and wonders if the girl can change her attitude towards Mr. Ian. The girl was very angry and she had nothing to do with the last generation and what they wanted in the future. The next day, Ian asks her colleague with a smile if she can tell her her mobile phone number. Ian adds that this will make it easier for them to communicate at work and beyond, the girls were very embarrassed and explained that they were forbidden to use mobile phones while working. Ian continued to flirt with the girls at the reception, the guard standing nearby noticed that the guy had been appointed chairman and he even had dinner with the head last night. Ian looked at the guards with a serious face, the man, confused, explains that he applied for an additional set of guys and asks him to choose the right one for himself. Ian thanks his boss for this, the secretary passing by noticed that Ian was really good. The secretary noticed that the guy was giving instructions at the reception, and also asked the guy to follow her, Ian didn't understand why the secretary was so beautiful, I guess it's an illusion. Ian goes after the secretary and adds that it's not difficult for him with the beautiful lady, all the security notices that the secretary, who never smiled, was joking at the moment. Walking into the office, the secretary explains that the chairman wanted to thank the guy for saving him yesterday and invite him to lunch, Ian noted that lunch with the old man would be really boring and he was not interested in it. The secretary explains that it's difficult for her to say this and asks the guy to tell him personally, Ian explained that he will tell the man everything. At this moment the girl stumbles and begins to fall. The secretary tries to grab the guy's shirt. Ian manages to catch the phone and the falling girl, holding her by the waist. The girl was very embarrassed, Ian asks the secretary to be more careful, because her heels are too high, the chairman's voice came through the telephone receiver. The man says that his daughter wants to apologize to the guy and resolve this conflict. Ian states that this lunch is not a problem for him and he will come, the chairman adds that the secretary will pick him up in the evening. The secretary with a smile explains that she should inform the general director about the dinner, therefore, the girl needs to leave. The secretary asks not to forget about today's meeting, because she will pick him up, Ian asks the girl to go slower. All observations of the ongoing and uneven relationship between Ian and the secretary. The girls explain to the guy that they will be treated rudely if boss Meng sees them, it was unclear to Ian why such a person was so influential. Ian jokingly asks if the surveillance department is like an old dog, watching every move, the girls were lost in their faces because of what they saw as the head of the department. The man was angry that some guy dared to slander the company's rule structure, the man also notes that for the first time he hears that in a small security department there is a position of deputy chief. The man points his finger at everyone standing, demanding that the guy go to the supervision department before leaving home, and also adds that the girls will have everything deducted from their bonus for half a month. Ian says with a grin that this is a good man. At this moment, Sun is sitting in the office, she decides to pick up the phone. The girl wonders what happened and why it happened, the girls report that Chief Meng was beaten. The girl stops in the aisle and explains that she heard about the conflict between the head of the department, Meng, and the deputy head of the security department. The girl was amazed at what Ian was doing at the moment, Sun yells at the guy, calling him a pervert who kills innocent people. The girl swings at the guy, from which Ian calmly dodges. Ian catches the girl's hand and notices that it smells very tasty. Ian decides to ask the girl why Miss Song always starts beating people without considering the situation, the girl asks to let her go, calling her a pervert again. The guy lets go of the girl's hand, Sun is embarrassed and wonders how the guy will explain this situation to her, Ian states that the man started all this first. Ian adds with a laugh that he stunned the man in self-defense, one of the guards noted in his thoughts that the guy had scolded him before, which is why he got angry and attacked the guy. The girl explains that she is sending her people to the monitoring department and will deal with the camera recordings, Ian stated that Chief Meng was unreasonably causing trouble for them. The man suddenly jumped up with the veins to beat the guy, as well as with demands to return his hair, the girl asks the CEO not to listen to the guy. Consider all the records, the girl declares that there is no room for any quarrel in their company, and she was wrong about the man. He claims that the guy set him up and asks him to check the security department records again, 
the girl adds that every employee must behave seriously and not put on such shows. He adds that boss Meng should look for a new job, the man thinks that the girl is in agreement with the guy and that he shouldn't get involved with him. Yin, not wanting to continue listening to these threats, hits the man on the head with a slight movement of his hand. Yin claims it was self-defense, the unconscious man falls to the ground. Sun doesn't want to continue listening to this and leaves the office, she noticed that the guy had become more vigilant because of last night, the girl was unexpectedly surprised that he was so careful. The girl returns to her office and answers another call, the girl was glad that Sun finally answered her call. The girl asks if Sun is free in the evening and asks him to come to her for dinner to talk. Sun sighs and wonders why her friend didn't go to the boss of the Emerald Paradise, adding that if the girl throws something out, she won't leave her alone. The girl explains that everything will go well and she will pick up Sun in the evening. At this moment, Ian and the chairman were sitting in the car, the man explained that Sun was busy at work today and would not be able to go with them. The guy was disappointed that the girl did not come to him, he suggested that the chairman go to a small shop nearby and eat there. At that moment, a red sports car stopped near the office. Sit in the car Sun wonders why her friend decided to chase the car and her father, the girl explains that she is curious who Ian is. The girl explains with a smile that if she had not arrived today, her friend would not have told about their relationship. The girls really looked at who the person was who could be her bodyguard. Sun was completely uninterested in this trip. Sitting in the car, the girls watched as Ian sat at the table with the chairman and secretary. Sun was angry that they were sitting in a diner, I guess the guy did it on purpose. Ian asked her boss to eat and enjoy the evening with a smile. The man does not understand what they are doing in this place, but he was ready to eat this food. At that moment, a man stood around the corner and reported something on the phone. The secretary decides to clarify why they came to this stall, suggesting that Ian brought them intentionally, the guy explains his action by saying that he grew up in difficult conditions and such food is simply heaven for him. Ian looks around and adds that the secretary and the chairman should eat, because after a while this will not be possible explaining that there are several people who are looking at Boss Sun. The man assumes that it is Xing Hui who has arrived again, the guy continues to eat, adding that the chairman should not worry, because he is nearby. With a smile, Yin also added that their country has video surveillance everywhere, no matter what the enemy wants to do. Yin explains that their enemy will try to bring the man to a place where there is no surveillance, assuming it will be a CTV. At this moment, a man approaches the table and greets Director Sun, Asking if he remembers him, the chairman confirms that he remembers the man, calling him Director Fatu. The man invites Chairman Sun to go with him and have fun at the KTV. The chairman wants to refuse this proposal, explaining that he is having dinner with Mr. Ng. Yin decides to find out if they sing songs at KTV, suggesting that Boss Sun go and eat there. Yin continues to eat, declaring that he will join the chairman a little later asking him to leave the car for him, the chairman realizes that Ian is throwing him as bait. Sun's friend does not understand what kind of people came to Chairman Sun and are taken away to an unknown destination when Ian continues to sit and eat, Sun suggests walking around and watching what is happening. The elevator opens on the 17th floor, the man explains to Chairman Sun that the KTV is located in this exact location. There were a large number of different mercenaries standing in the room, they all smiled sarcastically as Chairman Sun arrived. The man Luo Xiaofan thanks Director Nyo for the work done, adding that all past grievances have been forgotten, asking the man to go into the next room to wait. Luo, with an evil smile, states that he has an important matter to discuss with Director Sun. All the mercenaries surround the defenseless chairman Sun and the secretary. The secretary decides to immediately dial Inya, the girl wanted the guy to come quickly and save them. Law immediately notices this and rushes towards the girl, simultaneously knocking the phone out of her hands. Law grabs the girl by the throat and asks who the girl is calling, assuming that it is bodyguard Ian. in her thoughts, the girl continued to ask Ian to save them. The chairman immediately tries to stand up for the girl and demands that she stop, a mercenary standing nearby immediately stops the man. Luo grinningly asks Chairman Song to transfer 40% of Ching Huang's shares into his name and then pay compensation to Xing Hui of 1 billion, the guy continued to hold the girl by the throat, adding, that after this he will release them safe and sound. The man states that this is impossible, because his share was transferred to his daughter Song Yi and she is now the chairman of Qinghuang. 
Law made a face, calling the old man a bastard, the whole plan went downhill. At this moment, several more mercenaries entered the room, showing Luo two girls standing on the street. Luo noted with a smile that this was a really good coincidence for him, because the two beauties of Nanshan were in such a place. Song calls the guy shameless, suggesting that the Xinghui gang is only capable of such things. Sun's friend states that she is not afraid of his grandmother's people. Law comes closer and takes the girl's chin, adding that he knows the girl's past. Sun demands that they take their hands off her, because she reported to the police before she came to this place and in half an hour the building will be surrounded. Law immediately attacks Sun, which makes her very scared. The girl falls to the ground, Law stands on top, declaring, that he would stay with the girl to see if the police would come for her. Luo takes the girl's hair, adding that Qing Huang Company got its name because of the pricelessness of female beauty in the Song family, Law also demands that in addition to the previous conditions, the girl also becomes his woman. The girl was confused, she said that if the guy touched her, she would make him pay a hundred times more. At this moment, Ian enters the room and asks if everyone is here, adding, that he managed to find them too easily. The guy looks at everyone in the room. Law turns his head and observes Ian, realizing that this is the same mercenary with good skills. Law demands that the mercenary Charles deal with the guy for him, the man did not understand why Ian was here. All the mercenaries were confused by Yin's presence. No one wanted to attack the guy, calling him the king of mercenaries. The mercenaries all parted and began to let Ian through, the guy demands that everyone sit peacefully, he planned to deal with everyone in the future. Law decides to act immediately and shoots Ian, simultaneously calling him a bastard. Charles, standing aside, was amazed how Law dared to shoot at Razor. Ian easily dodges the shot, which Law did not expect at all. With a slight movement of his hand, Ian knocks the barrel out of Lo's hands. From such force the gun simply breaks in half, Law begins to writhe in pain. Charles continued to stand aside in fear, because he understood that the razor would not take anything, the man did not understand how he could become an enemy, because this was certain death. Ian lunges again and hits Law in the jaw, sending him flying to the side. Ian adds with a smirk that Law's tricks won't get him. The secretary was amazed by Yin's strong character and skills. Ian decides to approach Sun with an offer to help her and relieve the swelling on her face, Sun didn't understand what the guy was up to. Sun embarrassedly demands that the guy not be a hypocrite and not think about taking her, simultaneously calling him a pervert. Ian approaches the secretary and also offers the girl to relieve the swelling, the secretary was embarrassed by such a proposal. The guy puts his hand to the girl's face, the secretary was amazed that she really felt better. Confused, Sun continued to look askance at the guy. Ian takes one of the mercenaries and reminds Charles that the police will arrive soon, the guy asks him not to say anything about him, so he had nothing to do with this incident, Charles agrees immediately. Next, Ian arrives at the park and stops to implement his plan. The guy makes a cut on the man's neck, explaining to the mercenary that he is finished. Ian demands that he return and tell the rest of the mercenaries that Ian is currently in China, the mercenary thanks through tears that Ian left him alive. The next morning, Ian returns to the office. Ian begins to yawn loudly from fatigue, he did not understand why Ba Song called him so early. The man greets Inya, offering him to smoke one of the cigarettes, the chairman asks Song to convince him of his defense. Ian falls on the sofa and declares that it is difficult for him to do anything, because the girl has warnings against him. The chairman enters Song's office, the girl wonders if something happened at the chairman's place, because she has a meeting soon and needs to leave quickly. The man asks the girl to consider her father's proposal, because she herself has seen Mr. Yin's skills. Sun states that her biggest danger is having a guy with an unreliable character around her, the girl explains that the guy allows the chairman to be bait. The girl also adds that she doesn't like guys who smoke. Ian immediately throws the cigarette into the trash, the guy understands that the incident on the plane made a bad impression on him. The man approaches Ian and explains that the girl still doesn't understand the world well and Sun still needs the guy's protection. The secretary also comes and asks why Ian looks so bad, suggesting that he didn't sleep well. The girl is embarrassed, adding that she was impressed by Yin's rescue yesterday, the secretary decides to take care of the guy's housing issue. After a while, Yin's phone receives a call. An unknown girl explains on the phone, that I have already found one option for the guy, 
Ian did not understand how the unknown woman could find out about the search for an apartment. The girl asks if the guy is cool, adding that she wants to see him in two minutes. Ian runs into the secretary's office very excitedly. The guy notices the girl standing next to the secretary. The girl hugged the secretary, surprised that the guy came so quickly suspecting that Ian was worried about Fong Fong. At this moment, Ian was holding a knife behind his back. Ian, trying to laugh it off, calls the girl a beauty, wondering if they met yesterday. The girl explains that if the guy had not saved her yesterday, she would not have provided Ian with such a good apartment, Ian, holding his head, adds that he doesn't have money to pay the rent yet. The girl hands over the card, explaining that by order of the chairman, the card was issued so that the guy could spend two million a month. The girl puts her hand on Yin's shoulder, noting that since the guy has become rich for you, why don't he invite her and Fang Fang to dinner? Yin believed that nothing better could be found than an exquisite paradise. The company gets into the car and heads to the restaurant they need. Yin noted with a laugh that a luxury car and beautiful girls are every man's dream. The secretary explained that some people didn't like her, Ian adds that the girl has too high standards and if she even looks at him, her face will immediately change. Ian explains that if there are handsome men, that means eating soft food, then there is no problem, the secretary offers to go to her house and then she will feed him. The girl declares that she will prepare the best romantic dinner for the couple and provide the best room in the house, Ian, clearing her throat, asks the girl to stop joking like that because it has gone too far. The company arrives at a luxurious restaurant on a skyscraper. Ian noticed that the Moo girl's personality was actually complicated. A man approaches the girl and starts whispering something to Moo. The girl adds that the guy should not listen to Fan Fan, because she never relies on her family's money. The girl notices something that really struck her. Moo explains that the couple arrived at the wrong time, Fan Fan wonders what happened. The girl folds her hands and says that Luo Yi will soon come with important people and she needs to meet them. Yin wonders who Luo Yi is, assuming that the girl is afraid of him. At this moment, Sun enters the restaurant, accompanied by an unknown man. Mu approaches Lo and greets him, because a lot of time has passed since the man's last visit. Mu whispers that tonight will be interesting and Yin might cause some trouble for the couple. Sun notices Yin standing behind him. The guy silently watched the conversation between Sun and Mu. Yin noted in his mind that he usually didn't care, but today he wanted to commit a crime, the guy is interested, why did the girl come to discuss business in the restaurant? Mo approaches Fang Fang, wondering if the girl has come to discuss work, the girl looked at the guy in confusion. Yin decides to ask the guy a question, why does he care so much why the girl came to dinner? Sun suggests getting back to business and starting to discuss business, Song also introduces Yin as the deputy head of the company's security department. With a smile, Law points out that this is the guy who sent his older brother to prison, the man offers to sit at the same table and discuss everything. Sun thinks that they shouldn't do this, because she is not going to sit at the same table with a person of unreliable character. Sun and Lo sit down at their table, Sun begins a conversation about how both companies want to end this conflict. Luo explains with a smile that it all started because of Qing Huang and they had previously put forward their conditions. Luo decides to rephrase his answer to the fact that if Miss Song agrees, they will immediately resolve all conflicts. The guy puts the recorder on the table and explains that everything is simple, because all the girl needs is to marry him. Yin was perplexed by what he heard, he looked sideways at the stolid Song and Luo. Chairman Song states that everything said is absurd and not entirely unreasonable, the man believed that this would help both sides in solving the problem. Yin continued to eat in silence and listen to the conversations at the next table, the girl explained that no one had ever dared to treat her so impudently. The guy added that if the girl agreed, then all the affairs of his older brother and the company would be forgotten. Yin, unable to continue sitting on the sidelines, gets up from the table. Yin heads toward Song's table. Fan Fan takes the guy by the hand, clarifying what he wants to do, Yin states that she is not going to do anything, wanting to book a ticket for the evening flight back to America. The girl wonders why the guy is so unhappy with his date with her, Yin doesn't quite understand what Fang Fang is talking about. Yin looks at the girl questioningly, Fan Fan wonders if he still wants to return to America. The girl explains, that Yin thought she wanted to be her boyfriend and that's why it was a date, Ian understands that he himself has a date and therefore he has no right to be angry with Sun. Sun explains to Lo that she is ready to give the guy a chance, 
just like her father said. The girl declares that the term is only three months and that he never creates problems for her father again. Law gets up from the table offering the girl a ride home, Sun explains with a serious expression that she doesn't need it. Song wonders if Luo is after Secretary Qian, so he can give her a ride. Fang Fang states that Song misunderstood everything and she always avoided the guy. La, confused, confirmed that they were not in a relationship, Sun still asks Luo to go alone and today she will stay in the Emerald Paradise. La gets into his car, realizing that he doesn't need to put too much pressure on Sun because it's better for him to take his time. Luo wonders how Xiaoyu's affairs are being resolved because Lin will be back soon, the driver states that it will be difficult for Brother Fan to get out unharmed and Xiao said that she will return soon and help with Brother Fan's case. Mu, sitting next to Sun, states that among the three of them, only Fang Fang was lonely. The girl was interested in whether something would happen with Deputy Chief in M this evening. In the next room, Fan Fan sat and could not understand what was wrong with her, because she had only known the guy for a few days. The girl notices Ian lying on the sofa. The girl came closer and realized that the guy had actually just fallen asleep. Someone knocks on the girl's room, wondering if Fan Fan is awake. Ian next door declares that he is going to look at Mu's apartment and will be gone for half a day, the girl assumes that the guy is thinking about her and is afraid that the gossip will affect her. Ian goes outside and tries to find the street he needs, not understanding why everything is so difficult to find. Ian notices that the girl was being pestered by several guys. Ian dispatches his attackers without further ado, declaring that he hates people who bully girls. Ian asks if everything is okay with the girl's leg, offering to take the girl home, the girl thanks the guy for his work, explaining that she lives nearby in Yenxian. Ian was glad to hear what he heard, because he needed to find Yenxian. One of the agents stood behind a tree, speculating, that the guy is his Yale. The second guy adds that he's not sure but assumes that it's him, the men call him the mercenary king, the razor. Ian, taking the girl's bike, decides to accompany her home, the girl introduces herself by name Lu Yunting and says that she lives with her mother. The girl notes with a smile that Miss Mu charges them only 300 yuan in rent, Ian realizes that Mu deceived him by taking 30,000 yuan from him. The guy approaches one of the houses, the girl explains that Mu Yenxian lives in this house. The guy asks to proceed carefully, Lu nods to Ying. At this moment, a fist flies from the open door towards Ian, the guy easily dodges. Then he goes into battle with his legs, but even here Ian easily blocks the blow. The girl calls the guy a hooligan and demands that he let her go, otherwise she will call the police. Ian explains that the girl misunderstood him because he is a new tenant, Lu also asks Exiner to come to her senses, because she misunderstood the guy. At this moment, two men in strict black suits enter the office. The man introduces them as being in charge of the northern part of the region. The man salutes Mu Xianghui, introducing himself as the captain of the National Overseas Special Operations Group. Mu provides several photos and clarifies whether the person in both photos is the same. Mu adds that he received one photograph five years ago, and the man also spent countless amounts of money in the battle in North Africa. A man looking at the photo calls the guy a razor, noting that he is only strong but also smart, the man believed that they should not become his enemy, because someone from Mu's circle could receive his favor. Confirms that both photos are of the same person, adding that the razor's name is now Yin Ziyu and he is the deputy head of the security department. The man standing opposite Mu coughs and realizes that his boss wants to send him to find out the reason why the razor is in Qinghuang. Mu confirms with a smile, adding that Mu Jian's sister gave the guy an apartment. Mu called the girl a damn girl in his thoughts. At this moment, Yin and the two girls were still standing at the entrance, Exiner tries to find out about the guy on the phone. Lu, sitting on the porch, wonders what Miss Mu said, the girl confirms that it was Mu who arranged all this. Sinera invites everyone to go into the house, Lu smiles back. Lu notices the girl running and wonders why Yun came here, Yin continues to watch what is happening. The girl approaches Lu and asks if the girl is in pain. Yin notices how beautiful the girl was. Xianera introduces Yun and explains that the girl also rents a room here. Yun straightens his hair and helps Lu get up from the porch while greeting Yin. Yin greets the girl back in confusion, the guy was excited that he would live with three beauties. Inya receives a call on her phone, picking up the phone, 
Ian explains to Boss Lee that he is busy now and will soon return and tell everything, the man asks the guy to come back quickly, because Law has blocked the doors and has officially started stalking the CEO. The man explains that if the CEO does not agree to his terms, he will break into the building. There are several cars parked outside the company office blocking the entrance, Luo demands that Miss Song agree to meet with him. Law also adds that the girl promised not to avoid him. The secretary reports to the chairman that the head of the security department has finally returned. Ian comes closer to Lo and asks if the guy has an appointment, otherwise he should leave. Law was outraged by the meeting with the guy because he had not yet settled with him for his brother. Luo declares that he is ready to transfer 100 million if Qin Huang fires Ian immediately. The man made a statement that he allowed the guy to look after his daughter, but he was not ready to agree to this offer, in his thoughts, the man noticed that he was ready to spend a hundred million so that the guy, on the contrary, would stay. Law forgot to be very angry about this decision. Luo orders his guards to beat Ian, all the security begins to hover over the guy. Ian starts hitting the guards on the head with a baton. Lo no even louder demands that all his guards start beating him to death. Ian sighs languidly at this. Ian, with a slight movement of his hand, continues to beat the guards on the head, causing them to fall helplessly. At that moment, La's phone rang and the guy immediately picked up, he greets Miss Song. The girl states that because the guy forced his subordinates to break into the yard, she is very disappointed. The girl declares that she does not like impolite people and asks the guy to leave immediately. La, looking out the girl's window, declares that he still has three months and he is not ready to stop there. La adds that he will let everyone know that the girl will be his, Inya is too annoyed by the guy's behavior. All company employees go out into the street and congratulate Ian on his victory, the secretary asks if the guy is okay. Lo is angry and states that those who go against him have problems, Ian declares with a smile that this is not a problem for him. At this moment, Sun silently stood at the window and watched what was happening. Lo is unable to continue standing at the entrance to get into his car. Lo receives another call, the man asks why the guy is so hopeless and didn't come for him on time. A girl near the plane said that the guy gave her the Ferrari for fun, Luo wonders why Xiao Fan called her. The girl states that her brother got confused and forgot the reason, the girl explains that the second brother called and asked to avenge him. The man states that the girl's mission has changed and she needs to help him become a shareholder of the company. The girl explains that she came specifically to deal with Ian, and not rely on Song's decision. The girl asks not to bother her and she will do everything in her own way adding that she doesn't know how many people in the family are waiting to laugh at him. Law states that they will only have to dream because he is not going to rely on anyone and will do a big business himself. The girl arrives at the sought-after house and enters it. Miss Luo goes to the pool and notices that Miss Mu's legs have become quite attractive, even though they haven't seen each other for several years. The girl wonders if Miss Mu wants to go with her to the discussion room, Mu wonders why the girl arrived. Mu reminds with a smile that the girl swore last year that she would never return to China. Miss Luo explains that there is nothing special about this, she just needs to help her brother take revenge on Ng. Miss Luo adds that she has heard that Miss Mu knows the guy. The girl now understands that not everything is so simple. The girl stands up abruptly and asks Miss Lo a question. Mu assumes that the girl hypnotized her, adding that she went too far. I understand that Miss Mu will not tell anything. The girl leaves, Mu immediately dials Sun and explains that since the girl arrived from abroad, this means that everything is moving to serious action. Mu assumes that she is not trying to help Lo, but is turning against the girl to take revenge. Sun declares that she is no longer the same girl she was before, I allow her to let Miss Luo go. After a working day, Ian decides to hold a meeting, he asks not to let anyone in who has not previously been registered. Ian also adds that all future guards must carry batons with them, if someone dares to embroider, then they should call him, everyone agrees with Yin's decision, and watches an expensive blue car drive up to the office. The guards are interested in Law, who has again arrived at the company, and since he was not previously registered, they will not let him through. Luo is sweet explains that he is the CEO's boyfriend and came to pick her up to show sincerity, the guards disagree with the guy and assume that he is trying to stalk Sun. Law comes up and slaps one of the guards, calling him incompetent. The guard explains that just because he can't touch the man, that doesn't mean he can't touch his car, ordering everyone else to smash it. 
At this moment, all the guards break Lo's luxury car, Sun goes outside and observes what is happening. Sun demands that everything stop immediately, Yin stands silently nearby. Law wonders if the girl did this on purpose. Sun explains that this is not her order and after that they will definitely sort it out and pay for the car. Law adds something because this is a misunderstanding, they will forget about it and it's not worth paying for the car, offering to go to a restaurant with him. Sun, closing her eyes, adds that she still needs to deal with the security department and so she leaves. Law says goodbye to the girl and says that he will return tomorrow. Sun stands in front of the guards and decides to reprimand them, she believes that it was an impulse, an impulsive act, even though it was for the company. Sun states that since Lee's boss gave the order to break the car, it will be deducted from his salary, Ian explains that it was his order to crash the car. Ian adds that he helped the girl drive Lo away, but if something happens to her, he is not ready to take responsibility and protect the characteristic girl. All the guards begin to talk sharply, realizing that Ian is saying everything correctly. The girl notices the guy taking off his shirt, Ian declares that he is not interested in such cold girls and is going to take off his clothes and leave. Ian reminds that his services start from 5 million to 1 billion dollars and all the so-called shares will be paid on time, so they do not owe each other anything. Ian leaves saying that he regrets wasting his time. After surgery service from the company, the guy unconsciously returned to Mu Yenxian. Yin, smoking another cigarette, notices those same bandits standing at the entrance, the girl stood at the entrance and blocked the passage with a thug. The guys, led by boxing coach Feng, demanded that Lu come out to them and talk. At this moment, one of Feng's subordinates attacks Yin, saying that it was he who attacked them in the alley. Yin effortlessly makes one strike, neutralizing the attacker. Feng declares that those who dare to beat his brothers will be beaten by him. Yin engages the entire gang in battle, the girl at the entrance offers to help the guy deal with everything. The girl notices how one by one the bandits fall before Yin's feet. Ultimately, Yin holds that same Feng and agrees for the girl to help him. The girl understands that the guy dealt with the gang too quickly. Feng and the rest of the gang storm off, the man planned to take revenge for this humiliation. Lu thanks the guy for saving her, after all, it is because of her that all these people gather on the porch. Yin declares with a smile that since they live in the same house, they are practically family, the guy understands that he cannot bring himself to go to America. Lu's daughter also thanks the guy for saving her mother. Yin is confused that Lu has a daughter. At this moment in the city Mu greeted his second brother, adding that I missed him too much. Mu was glad to meet him because the guy disappeared two years ago to complete a secret mission, the girl was wondering why the guy came back this time. The guy is wondering if it's safe to talk in this particular house. Mu pressed a special button and explained that she had activated the signal blocking, so no one would overhear them. The guy asks if Yin knows the girl, Mu assumes that the guy returned specifically for Yin. Mu didn't understand what kind of incredible personality the guy had, the second brother claims that this is confidential information. Explain that the purpose of his return this time is his safety, asking him not to interfere too often. Mu understands that the guy is really not as simple as he seems. The next morning, Yin warmed up as usual before going outside. The guy was balancing on the legs of the chair, holding on with just one hand. Yin suddenly hears the girl scream. Yin assumed that someone was in danger, the guy assumed that someone had entered the house and was trying to hide from him. Yin goes into the room where everyone is gathered, the guy asks what happened. In the middle is Nurse Sinera, saying that I am in great pain, Lu, covering her face, also watched what was happening. An unknown silhouette appeared behind the guy. The woman standing behind immediately states that Yin should have been killed immediately as soon as he entered the house. Yin tries to brush it off and adds that he didn't do it. Sinera confirms the guy's word and asks Lu's mother not to touch the guy. Yin comes closer to the girl and explains that you are a hidden wound after practicing martial arts, the guy adds that he can cure the girl's leg by asking her to endure a little pain. Yin stretches her fingers and then begins to treat the girl's leg. Yin lightly touches the girl's leg. Siriega screams a little from unbearable pain. The girls surrounding Sinera are wondering if everything is okay with her, Sinera is surprised to say that her pain has gone away. The girl thanks Inya for her help, because today the company is recruiting personnel. The girl did not want to miss the classes because she would have to wait next year. Yin, unexpectedly for the girl, puts his hand on her shoulder. 
Ian explains with a smile that he will not allow the girl to ride the subway with such a wound, so he is ready to take her on a bicycle. The girl turns away her voice, I'm a little embarrassed. Having decided, Sinera sets off with Ian on a bicycle. During the ride, the guy starts laughing. The girl embarrassedly calls the guy a pervert and wonders why he's laughing. Ian was surprised that after the girl thanked him, she called him a pervert. The girl turns away from the guy, embarrassed, Ian continues to drive and smile. The company was still recruiting at the job fair. Ian and Sinera successfully make it to the fair and observe a large crowd of people. Ian is immediately noticed by the secretary and greets her. Fanfong was surprised to see Ian at the job fair. The girl was embarrassed and at the same time glad to see the guy. Fan ran up to Ian and hugged him. The girl believed that the guy had already left, she asked the guy not to leave. Having come to her senses, Fan became even more embarrassed. The girl abruptly moved away from the guy, adjusting her glasses, she asked the head of the security department to oversee the recruitment. It's fun that most of the people who visited the fair came to the company. Poor notices the noise and non-observance of the queue towards the company, which is why the secretary explains that there is no point in recruiting people who are not able to queue. The guy abruptly approaches the beginning of the crowd of people, everyone at the fair immediately notices something. Ian raises his finger up and explains that people who want to get into the company must follow the rules and therefore the recruitment is moved to another place at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. People were perplexed that some unknown guy was standing at the beginning of the line, people immediately begin to wonder whether he is the head of the company. Ian explains that he is the deputy head of the security department at the company. People were outraged because a simple security guard had no qualifications demanding that he fail. At this moment, Fan also approached, she immediately explained that the guy's word was the official decision of the company and those who had objections could leave. Ian explains with a smile that the job does not have low, low verification requirements and those who don't understand this have no place in the company. The guy comes closer to the revolutionary man and asks if he has another question. Having finished this, Ian goes back to Fan, the girl understands that the deputy chief has suspended recruitment in order to help his friends. Ian asks the girl not to be jealous and explain that she believes in Exionera's skills. Fan notes that the girl is capable and they have a vacancy for an intern for her. Sinera thanks Fan for her help and adds that she will definitely do her best to work. Take action, another city center office is being moved. An overweight man sits at a table and listens to his business partners. The man was curious, how did his two interlocutors get to know each other? There is a large stack of money on the man's desk. A former company employee and boxer phone demand that he take revenge for them. While already at home, Zinera was congratulated by the entire Liu family on her new job. Sinera explained that this was all thanks to Yin's connections. Guy explains that the girl needs to slow down early and so he will go to the store. Around the corner of the house stood a man with a stick, waiting for Yin. The unknown man immediately swings at Yin, who easily dodges the blow. And he doesn't jump back to regroup, which greatly surprises the attacker. Ian goes on the attack and swings his fist at the unknown man. The guy doesn't have time to dodge and falls to the ground. There is still a small crowd in front of the guy, Fong declares that now the guys have no chance, because two masters are standing in front of him to beat him. Ian notices that this is a familiar face, Fong adds that they know each other and now the guy won't run away from him. The master of the Shaolin stick and the heir to Shaolin Wushu stand in front of Fong. Two guys suddenly attack Ian and beat him up. Ian easily catches the unknown man's stick and declares that that terrible heir and his ancestors should regret this. Ian takes the stick with his other hand and hits the guy. A blow comes to the body, causing the unknown person to fall to the ground. A second guy stands in front of Ian, Ian immediately understands that this was a wushu technique. Ian throws away the stick and begins to fight on his opponent's terms. Ian was outraged by the guy's skills without recognizing his wushu. Ian stated that the guy's wushu had become obsolete a long time ago and was no longer suitable, Ian hits the guy on the cheek. Fong watches as Ian easily defeats the two masters who had previously said that they would only need two minutes to win. Ian looks at his next opponent and wonders why he doesn't attack but just stands aside, the guy with his hands in his pockets explains that he came just for the quantity. The guy asks not to hit him, Ian suggests that he might be a mercenary. Ian assumes that they are interested in him, which makes him smile sarcastically. The guy doesn't understand why Ian lowered his head and fell silent. 
Ian sharply hits the unknown guy with a stick near the legs. The guy falls to the ground and asks for forgiveness, Ian understands why he doesn't fight. Ian completely does not understand the intentions of this mercenary. Ian again wonders why the guy does not dare to attack him. Ian leans over and notices that he has good acting skills, I don't understand if it's interesting to live there like that. The two masters stood up with difficulty and noticed that this could be a mercenary from Qinghu. Men also mean that this is an unknown security guard and this guy is the same person. At this moment, Ian turns his attention to the guys, you, in turn, smile absurdly in response. Unknown immediately apologizes for offending his brother. Having bowed to the guy, they notice that they didn't know that he was a man from Qinghu. Ian doesn't quite understand why they start bowing to him because of this. Ian explains that he came to this world of mystery and would not like to reveal his identity, so he asks the guys to remain silent, all the men tell him not to worry about it. The guy who apologized earlier noticed that he recognized the male mercenaries. The guy explained that he had already left the path of mercenaries and started a family in Nancheng. The guy was ready to help Ian in any way. Ian was slightly interested in this proposal and therefore he continued to head to the store. The action moves to the company's office. Ian returns to the office as if nothing had happened, directorly ran to Ying so that he would go into the CEO's office and talk to her. Ian doesn't understand why the girl is looking for him. Ian goes to the CEO's door and knocks, son allows us to enter. Ian wonders why the girl was looking for him, trying to explain why he came back. Sun immediately throws the keys towards the guy. Ian doesn't quite understand what this means, the girl is trying to say that she understood everything the guy said earlier. Sun believed that everything said made sense. The CEO promises that he will accept the guy's protection, which slightly shocked Ian. Sun sheepishly adds that from now on the guy will be her personal driver and asks to pick her up at 7.30 in the evening. The even more beautiful girl asks the guy to leave, Ian doesn't understand what's happening. Ian, already out the door, looks at the keys and still couldn't believe that the girl asked to protect her. At that moment, Fun's call came on the guy's phone, the guy greets the girl. The secretary asks Inya to help her, adding that she is in the Sandmen bar. Ian was very excited when he heard the girl's frightened voice. At that moment, Fun pressed herself against the wall in fear and asked not to come near her. One of the mercenaries reported to law that he had placed a dozen militants at the entrance so that Ian could not survive while coming here. Law did not understand that even though he was taken out of the game, he could not sit still and had to be killed by the mercenary. Fun continued to look at the guys in fear. Law suggested that the mercenaries decide for themselves what to do with the girl, because he didn't care much about it. At this moment, Yin's car flies into the bar, and everything hits the guy hard. Ian manages to look at the excited Law with a serious face. Lo understood that the guy arrived quickly enough. Ian was as serious as possible and cursed everyone who was in this bar. In the girl's head, one of the mercenaries imagines a weapon threatening the guy. Ian looked at what was happening in the bar with clenched fists. Ian calmly walks towards the crowd, the mercenary holding the girl continued to threaten that he would kill the girl. Without further ado, Ian extends her hand in front of her which the other mercenaries did not understand at all. Ian quietly added that the mercenary had no right to touch the girl. With a slight movement, Ian began to control the whip, calmly cutting the throats of the mercenaries. Fong was shocked and frightened by Yin's actions. The guy immediately runs up to the girl and covers her eyes, Ian is simple, Fan is not afraid. Ian adds that the girl should not be afraid because he is nearby, the remaining mercenaries awaited boss Luo's orders. Luo angrily shouted at the rest of the mercenaries to open fire on Ian, the guy suddenly disappears behind the nearest wall. Ian sits the girl down and asks her to stay hidden until he finishes. The guy jumps out from behind the wall under a hail of shots. Ian continues to cut down the mercenaries one after another with ease. The whip flew throughout the hall and cut all the mercenaries until only Law remained. Luo continued to shoot and demanded it from the other mercenaries, wanting to kill Ian. Law observes that Ian was already behind him. Ian put the blade of a knife to the guy's throat, which he didn't expect at all. Ian explains that originally the guy was supposed to stay alive, but everything changed due to the kidnapping of his friends. A moment later, Ian comes outside holding the wounded fan in her arms. The agents standing outside immediately demand the guy to stop and stop moving, while simultaneously pointing their weapons at him. Ian notes with a smile that the agents have finally shown up and he is really interested in the secret surveillance of him every day. 
The chief agent was amazed that the guy knew about their surveillance and still decided to kill so many people. The agent adds that the guy is against their country and he needs to go with them, Ian immediately refuses, because he doesn't have time for this. At that moment, the agent felt something next to him, which greatly shocked him. The agent immediately grabbed his throat, Ian clarifies whether the agents know his identity, as well as his abilities. Ian heads towards the car adding that he does not plan to take anything towards them. Ian also offers one favor for their work, the agent was amazed that the mercenary king himself was promising them a favor. The main agent asks the others to leave him because this service is invaluable for their country. Three hours later, Law was already in the morgue, lying soullessly on the table. Younger brother Luo was outraged and overwhelmed with grief at the loss of his brother. Miss Luo was also outraged that 15 people including the second brother died. The girl wanted to avenge her brother and make every effort to find out who the killer was. Ian brought Fan home and continued to monitor the girl's condition. The girl had difficulty falling asleep, but she was still scared, in her dream, Fan screamed that she didn't want this. At that moment, Fan jumps up in fear so that no one would approach her, Ian assumes that the girl was just having a nightmare. The girl took Ian by the hand and explained that in a dream she was taken hostage and demanded her life, the guy reassures Fan, because this is just a dream. Ian noted in his thoughts, that he used his true power because of which the girl felt this way, the guy did not want to resort to this again in the future. The guy notices a strange inflammation on the girl's neck. Ian takes the tool and asks the girl to be patient for a while before he helps her. The girl writhed a little in pain, having made an incision, a strange insect flies out from there. Ian kills the insect with a slight movement of his hand, leaving it no chance. The insect falls powerlessly to the ground. Fen wonders what exactly the guy found on her body, Ian explains that it is a bug and is actually a mixed plant. Ian explains that the person who did this to her had poor skills, but the girl still had nightmares. Ian helps the girl lie down in bed, covering her, the guy explains that Fan was involved in all this because of him. Ian decides to promise the girl that nothing will happen to her next time. The next day, Ian leaves the apartment, an agent stood on the threshold and invited Ian to go with him to a meeting. Ian agrees to the meeting because he was really curious about what the agent wanted to do with him. The agent accompanies the guy to the Nanching branch of the agency. The chief agent was amazed that the legend of the strongest mercenaries, nicknamed Razor, was Chinese. The agent reminds that in the world of mercenaries there are only three people who are the most difficult to reach. The legend adds that one of them is Ian, who is also the king of weapons. An agent with a statement that he is the main thing and the aforementioned Chinese are interested in him and want to make friends with the guy. Ian continues to look at the phone and accepts a sign of friendship from the agent, but at the moment he could not help. Ian added that he washed his hands in a golden bowl and extinguished the candle in the lamp of glory. The agent stated that their scout had recently reported that the Monster Alliance organization had almost destroyed all the mercenaries who had the lamp of glory. The agent concludes that Yin's landa was also broken. Na Jen also added that by renouncing his mercenary status, he could join them. With a grin, Yin wonders if the agent doubts that he is the leader of this organization. Yin gets up from the table and declares that he should tell the boss that he is ready to leave the world of mercenaries. Yin, throwing his hands behind his head, added that he no longer wants to get involved with the world of mercenaries. Yin returns to Fun's house and spends the evening with her. The girl thanks the guy for staying with her today, Yin declares with a smile that he is ready to stay every day if the girl cooks so deliciously. At the moment, Yin hears a strange sound in the yard. Yin abruptly covers Fan's mouth and demands that she return her room until he decides what happened. Ian notices two unknown people standing next to the house. And I'm not hiding blindly, I assume that the masters came to Fan's house for a reason. The film spots Gue Ji standing on the street. Ian understands that the girl wants to attack Fan and he should protect her at all costs. Ian knocks the glass out and notices a man standing nearby. Immediately yells at Gue Ji to come back and protect him. The girl attacks Ian from above. The guy does not remember that the girl will obey any order without exception. Ian tries to injure the man, but the girl abruptly covers him with her body. Ian decides to strike with her left hand, while the girl did not expect this. The girl easily stops the blow with her hand while holding the guy's knife. The girl is led away by Ian's hand, preventing the guy's next attack. Ian understands that this can all end badly. 
At this moment, Eam hears a strange sound. The girl immediately jumps away from the guy to the side so as not to get hit. Eam realizes that the Phantom Sniper is operating, made by the King of Weapons especially for him. Eam suggests that the target of the attackers is not actually Fan, but himself. It takes Guiji to retreat with him. Eam, realizing that the sniper has quite bad skills, decides to approach the man. Eam can kill him, then he should not think that he will return alive. Eam notices that the sniper's breath has disappeared, I assume that he is clearly a coward. Eam immediately dials Captain Mu and asks him to find out one person. The next day, Eam returns to the office because Song called him again. The guy goes into the girl's office, Sun asks about the attack last night. Eam with a smile asks not to worry about him because he is a master of medicine and has taken two sets of medicines, which is why he is fine at the moment. The girl slams the table stating that preparations for the annexation of the company are finally completed and she must deal with law. Eam realizes that in fact the girl is not so simple and it turns out he had a plan all along. Sun wonders if the guy can protect her father until the end of this war. The girl's Eam, after all, is what Lo mostly hates, Sun is asked not to disturb because she would have studied his art as a child. Eam asks not to forget, after all, he is her guard. Eam, leaving, adds that whether it is her father or herself, he will not allow anyone to act against them. The action moves to the company office. One of the director's subordinates reports that the company's shares have risen rapidly with the help of financing. Song hands over the papers and adds that she has collected some evidence against Xinghui and that is why she went to the media to report. The man noted that panic might arise in the company, but this will not affect Xinghui investors in any way. The girl explains that using dozens of accounts, she secretly bought 2% of Xinghui shares for about 1 billion. Fan points to the monitor, explains that there is also bad news, because Xinghui shares will be sold out, and at this moment they should arrange a sale. Song believed that this would cause a reaction to reduce the value of Xinghui, all the men noticed the genius of the plan. At this moment, Luo, seeing that his shares began to decline, became very irritated. Law asks to reassure all investors and prevent sudden sales, the guy's subordinates immediately agree. Yin was interested in what the current situation was, Song explained that Xinghui shares fell 6% in less than an hour and lost nearly 5 billion in value. Yin, looking at the chart, understands the complexity of the situation. A man comes to the director and asks whether he should continue selling Qinghua shares, since the situation with Xinghui shares has stabilized. Sun asks the man to continue and not stop, because she didn't say to stop. The man bowed approvingly and walked out the door. Yin decided to notice that today he looked at the general director from one side. Yin was delighted with the girl for how she carried out this work. Yin, embarrassed, adds that she has always conducted her work this way and the guy simply did not notice it. Sun began to think carefully about the guy's last words and draw some conclusions, Yin smiles at the girl in response. Yin adds that the tack girl looks much more attractive. Yin turns away and heads towards the exit, the CEO receives a call on his phone. The girl picks up the phone, the secretary explains that President Bai from the Tianyuan Foundation has already arrived, Sun asks to let the girl through. Bai walks into the room with a smile and notices that Mrs. Song has suffered really big losses. Song adds with a smile that if Luo finds out that President Bai is behind Tsinghua, he will definitely not give up. Yin notes that it turns out there is a coincidence in this and Luo has some kind of connection with Luo Wan's widow. The girl turns around and pays attention to the guy, wondering how he knows the head of the Luo family, Yin introduces himself as a security guard, adding that he met Luo abroad while washing dishes. A man runs into the CEO's room and declares that all their shares have been sold out and the interest is quickly being sold out. President Bai assumes that they all fell into Luo's trap, Sun couldn't believe it because a more powerful consortium should have been behind it all. Mr. Tan is currently in the capital, he notes that the Luo family really wanted to return to China, which is why they began to act so actively. The man also noticed that Luo Jiaran married a member of the Mu family. Squeezing contractions, the man understood that the southern city could no longer restrain Luo's ambitions and the capital should also begin to act. President B still didn't understand what to do next, Sun believed that first they should find out who was behind the scenes. One of President B's security guards hands the girl a phone with an outgoing call. 
The girl immediately screams and wonders if Tang is behind all this and wonders what the Luo family provided him with. Tang smirkingly states that he only annexed Qinghua to prepare for Tengxia's future development in Nancheng, the man also adds that he does not want to stand up to the Tianyuan family. Tan demands that the girl come out because no one will get all his catch. President Bi hangs up, Song did not expect that Tang himself would be their enemy, calling the entire alliance a superpower in the first echelon of all private capital in Huaxia. President Bi understood that they should not rely only on their talent and resources, because it was useless. In sighs languidly, Song answers the phone and explains that he won't be able to come to her brother's engagement party in Beijing. Miss Mu understands that the company is currently in crisis and therefore she wants to invite Song, because the most elite families in Beijing will be at the banquet. Miss Mu asks the girl to come, Sun realizes the genius of her friend's plan and therefore agrees to come to the banquet. Song was amazed that the person who would be with her brother, in my opinion, was from the Luo family. Song understood that this was Luo Xiaoxian. Two days later, Miss Mu and Song Zin took the first class plane to Beijing. Miss Mu was outraged that Yin flew with them, Yin stated that he was the backbone of the company and he needed to go. Miss Mu is amused that the guy is showing off too much in front of her. Miss Mu also added to Song that she recently learned that Luo Tiancheng and Luo Wan were dating. Song wonders who Luo Tiancheng is, Miss Mu explains, that he is a respected man and also the grandfather of President Bai. Miss Mu also adds that he is the head of the male side of the Luo family and he and Luo Wan are brother and sister. The girl explains that after an unknown accident, the Luo Z family fell apart and the Luo Wan side had to immigrate abroad and because of this, the Luo family went into decline. Miss Mu also explains that the Luo family used to be no worse than the current Tang family and after the recent events due to which the Luo family, reunited attracted a lot of attention. Yin understanding what this whole scene was for. Miss Mu and Sun cheerfully head out, the Yin continue to follow CEO Song. Yin receives a call on her phone, the girl was glad to see the guy. Xiao Sun added that the entire mercenary world had lost his whereabouts and she did not expect to see him in China, the girl wanted to meet him at the airport cafe. Yin comes to meet him and asks if the girl has heard about him from the Mu family. The guy was also wondering if the girl had met her ex the day before. Yin asked if the girl wanted to restore her old love. The girl explains that marriage is for the benefit of two families and there is no love in it, but she does not want to be selfish and violate family agreements. Yin assumes that this is not just a meeting, noting that the girl is quite straightforward as before. The girl is interested in why the guy came to the capital and is trying to interfere with the Luo family. Yin explains that he is not going to get involved in anything and now he is just a security guard in Tsinghua. The guy explains that anyone who opposes his company is the same as opposing him. Yin adds that if the capital's giants decide to scare him, he will gladly destroy them one by one. At this moment, a meeting between Miss Luo and Mr. Tang is taking place in the capital. The girl noticed that her guess was confirmed and Mr. Tan was a martial arts master. The girl confirmed that people who study ancient Chinese martial arts can really resist hypnosis, Tan asks to speak frankly. The girl hopes that Mr. Tang will help her grandmother Luo Wan become the head of the family after their merger. The man didn't expect Miss Luo to ask for such a thing, he was ready to help. Closer to the appointed time, guests began to gather in the banquet hall. The eldest son of the Mu family and his betrothed were slowly approaching the guests from the second floor. All the guests unanimously impregnated the newlyweds. Yin, standing among the crowd, also applauded as he watched what was happening. Some guests didn't realize that the man was standing next to Mu Jian. Tan came closer and greeted the newlyweds. Mu stepped aside and added that she only came with him to the banquet and nothing more. Tan was pleased with this situation, but still wanted the girl to stay with him forever, Mu stated that she would never be engaged to a person like Tang. Miss Mu turns around and leaves because she is tired and wants to rest. One of Tan's subordinates passes by and reports that everything is ready. While all the major families of the capital were tied to the engagement, a conspiracy was secretly unfolding against the Luo family. President B and his grandfather were traveling in a car, the girl was outraged and stated that Luo Wan should not count on the merger of the two families. Luo Tiancheng explains that the years have taken their toll on them and the hatred between the male and female sides has passed. At this moment, someone cuts off the Luo family's car. 
The Luo family's car overturns, the second car with security noted that things were bad and the head was attacked. Luo Tiancheng and his granddaughter successfully got out, one of the guards reported on the phone that the head of their house was attacked. At the moment they are unknown bandits. The security demands that Miss B take the head away while they apprehend the bandits. At this moment, Ying noticed that there were no women from the Luo family present at the banquet, although the entire hall was filled with people from other families. Yin also notices the head of the Mu family, Mu Yuanzheng. Mr. Mu wonders if Miss Luo Wan is staying. Miss Luo takes the microphone and states that her grandmother fainted at home and the family doctor helped her, but her grandmother still cannot attend the banquet. Mr. Mu asks to show Mrs. Luo's condition, the girl decides to see the man off. Sun receives the message and asks Yin to pay attention to this. Sun explains that Miss Bai is being pursued by someone and Tang and the Great Sword Master are involved in this. Yin understands that he can no longer hide, he must act because Tan apparently wants to die. The day approaches the head of the agency, I explain that the female side of Luo attacked the male side and he is coming to the rescue. Yin asks the agent to take care of Song in his absence. The agent provides his car, I confirm that he will monitor Song's condition. Go to the port where Luo was with his granddaughter Bai. The man covered his granddaughter and kept the attackers away. The man appears to be the head of the Luo family, asking why they were attacked, one of the attackers does not understand what the old man is talking about. The bandit immediately rushes at the man with a statement that he should be the heir to the throne. The bandit swings two swords at the man. The man notices he dodges, because it's like bandits, Miss B was very worried about her grandfather's condition. The bandit declared that there was no way to escape alive. At this moment, something flies in with the bandit's broken sword. The sword dissolves in the attacker's hands, Yin Yi stood to the side holding one of the bandits. The bandits were interested in who Yin was, the guy introduced himself as the one who would kill the attackers. Miss B remembered that it was the same little guard, the girl asked the guy to leave immediately. The bandits did not take the guy seriously and also wanted to kill him. Yin picks up the pipe that was lying next to him. The bandits were surprised that the guy was able to lift such a large pipe. Yin swung at the bandits with all his might. The leader among all the criminals manages to block Yin's blows. It is unknown who Yin is interested in because he was good with weapons. Yin introduces himself as his father, adding that if he doesn't believe him, he should come closer to him. Out of evil, unknown people chop the pipe into pieces and want to kill Yin. Unknown suddenly jumps on the guy, Yin continues to look at the bandit calmly. At that moment, he doesn't pull out a knife and blocks the attacker's blow. Yin easily dodges each blow and lands several himself. The unknown person assumes that the guy wants to destroy his dunton, Yin confirms his guesses. Mr. Luo understands that all this time Yin was trying to block the attacker's points. At this moment, Mr. Tan reports that all the people sent were killed and Mr. Luo and his granddaughter were saved. Tang could not believe what he heard, because these were first-class mercenaries. Tang said on the phone that no one would stop him from annexing the Luo family and if anyone else interfered with him, he would kill him. At this moment, already sitting in the car, a call arrives on Yin's phone, agent explains that Miss Song has disappeared and he failed to fulfill his promises, the guy wonders what happened. The agent explains that the banquet ended earlier than expected and some of the guests caused a commotion, causing the agents and Song to be separated. The agent adds that you only have to ask Yin for help, the guy states that he will leave Miss B and Luo in the car, adding that the agent will take them to the hospital. Yin returns to the hall where the banquet was held earlier. On the second floor, behind one of the railings, lay a sniper, the man was not going to let the guy go this time and he easily dodges, realizing that it is the phantom rifle again. Yin, with a slight movement of his hand, throws his knife towards the railing. An unknown mercenary falls to the first floor with a crash. Yin notes that the sniper was too careless, the man's weapon disintegrated into particles from the fall. Yin goes up to the second floor and asks the men where Tang is now. A dozen guards looked at the guy, Yin on Tuesday also asks where the female side of the Luo and Song family is. The agents rush at the guy without further ado. Yin decides to use his signature technique with a smirk. Yin laughs and lifts one of the agents up, remarking that he can finally have some fun. Yin easily scatters all the agents who attack him. After some time, I'm not left completely alone, all the guards lie immobilized. 
One of the guy's truss guards is a monster while simultaneously trying to load a pistol. Ian laughingly approaches the guy and disassembles his gun, the guy repeatedly asks the man where his goal is, the man immediately reports that he should go to the twelfth floor. Sitting in the room, Tan noticed that it had become quite quiet outside, suggesting that the uninvited guests were killed. Ian silently enters the room where everyone was sitting. Several guards held Miss Song with a machete to her neck. Ian asks again if he is being threatened. Miss Song asks the guy to leave immediately because it's not worth it. At this moment, Ian remembers how he lost his partner on the battlefield. With all her strength, the girl asked the guy to stay and continue living. Ian returns to reality and begins to shake slightly. Tan with a sneer and he will have to listen to them. Ian Tom sighs, you understand that Tang and the female side of Luo have united. Ian assumes that after killing Song, all responsibility will fall on the guard's shoulders, Miss Luo called the guard smart and wanted to play with him a little more before making his life hell. Ian declares that in this world there is no one who can scare him and immediately shoots toward Song. Ian hits the shoulder of the person holding Song, causing him to walk away writhing in pain, Ian suddenly runs up and takes the girl. The second guard, without having time to react, watches as the guy runs away. Ian and Song were already near the exit, the guy said that they were not going to run away. Ian added that he called Mu a long time ago and recorded the entire conversation in advance, so he would have enough evidence to arrest everyone. At this moment, the elderly Miss Luo enters the house, the woman produces only one word, outcast. At this moment, special forces enter the room, Tang realizes that Ian was just a decoy. Mu Xianghui's subordinates freed the people of the female side of the Luo family, Tan couldn't believe what was happening. Tan and Miss Luo were detained, Mr. Tan said this was not the end for Ian. Miss Luo lowered her gaze while standing in front of her grandmother. The woman told her granddaughter that she was disappointed in her. The woman turns away from Miss Luo and walks away, Ian, standing aside, thinks that it is better for a woman to hire security. After a while, Sun and Ian arrive to meet the white-haired girl, the girl noted how lucky Miss Song was to meet her today, the girl wanted to play the role of a peacemaker. The girl was the president of the Supreme Hongxiang, Chu Fei Yang, Cheong asked to shake Tengxiu Xia Nan's hand so that the fighting would subside. Song didn't quite understand Miss Chu's words, because Tang was arrested at that time, in his thoughts, Ian noticed that Chu deserved first place on his list of beauties. Song clarified whether Tang did not get what he deserved, Chu explains to the girl that no one will hold Tang accountable. Chu, drinking a mug of tea, adds that Tang has gone home and his family is first class. The girl reminds that Qinghua still has a lot of shares that are in Tang's hands. Chu believed that Tang could bankrupt Qinghua at any time, Sun emphasized that this would not be so easy for a man to do. Chu leans on the table and offers his services, guaranteeing that everything will be fine with Qinghua if Miss Song is willing to make a deal. The girl offered to give her Yin, who was standing behind Song, and pretend that he never existed. The girl needed to get a guy for her sister Yang. Chu knew that Yin was a disciple of a mysterious sect. Sun refuses the offer without further ado, emphasizing that the guy is an employee of her company, Inya was not happy that the girl called him just an employee. Song added that even if the company went bankrupt, it would still not sell Ian. Sun takes Ian by the hand and asks him to leave, because they have nothing more to discuss. The girl begins to pull Ian's hand, which the guy notices. Ian has strange memories in his head. Ian remembers his partner, the girl offered to cover his back one last time. One of Chu's guards states that they won't leave so easily. The guard suddenly attacks from behind, Ian easily manages to block the man's blow. The man calls Ian an arrogant finger and decides to attack again. Ian decides to use the technique and strike again. The other guards notice that Ian used the pulsating hand technique, the main one among all noticed that they needed to catch him and find out the secret of the disappeared sect. Ian realizes that the people standing in front of him are from the MA faction, the guards decide to attack the guy at the same time. The guards take out their swords and prepare for a general attack. Ian, in turn, pulls out a gun, calling those unscrupulous bastards who only dream of defeating him. Ian took Song's hand and prepared to defend himself. Ian wonders if they are still planning to attack him. Xiong demands that the guards leave and release Ian and Song. Xiong looked after Ian angrily, noticing in her thoughts that they would meet again. The Song believed that Chu I just want to take Ian for revenge, 
I wonder what the guy thinks about this, Ying doesn't know either and asks the girl to quickly return to Nancheng. In his thoughts, Ying noticed that the MA faction was trying to find his master. Sun notices messages on her phone that someone is trying to sell Qinghua shares, the girl immediately wanted to contact the company management so that everything could be done for you. Sun returns to his home and video chats with Fan, the girl explains that everything is fine. At this moment, Ian was standing behind I was looking at Song's room, Fan added that all of their company's partners stopped cooperating due to pressure from the four families. Sun lowered her head and understood that this could destroy them. Sun thought about what to do next, Ian notices the girl's depressed state. Ian puts his hand on the girl's shoulder and asks her not to worry because they always have another way. Sun thanked the guy for his support, Ian again asks if they have any other methods. Sun explains that they have one impossible way in which they will have to collect a huge amount of money, Ian clarifies what is the required amount. The girl believes in the authenticity of 200 billion, Ian was lost in the face at the moment due to the fact that during his entire career he earned only 1 billion. Sun explains that the four families have invested tens of billions in the stock market and in order to beat them they will have to invest 200 billion within two hours. At this moment, a girl on my phone accepts a call, Cheong explained that since the girl opposed her, this would not end well. Sun declares that she will under no circumstances give up her company to them. Ian, standing behind, smiles at the girl's optimism. Ian decides to add that it is just money and asks to leave this task to him. Sun turns sharply and wonders why he's screaming like that because she was scared. A couple of minutes later, Ian called one and his friends. The man greets his friend, but asked not to call at any time. The man also noticed that the guy had left the world of mercenaries and therefore he had something for him, Ian asked her friend to borrow a small amount. The man added that he had heard that the mercenaries account was blocked due to leaving the world of mercenaries, the man asked Ian to name the required amount. Ian names the amount as $30 billion, the man was shocked by such a big request. Ian added that he was ready to talk about the 10 best consortia in return, because he had an idea what they were, the man said that if the guy is telling the truth, then he is ready to lend the required amount. Ian tells the girl with a smile that he has found 200 billion yuan, Sun did not understand what kind of person Ian really was. The next day, the company came face to face with the four major families of the capital and shocked everyone, for some time, the company's name instantly spread throughout the country, everyone wanted to cooperate with them. At this moment, President Bai was still in the hospital, the girl thanked Inya for saving her. The girl emphasized that she did not expect to find out that a small security guard could have so much money. The girl begins to be drawn to the guy, adding that she doesn't care who the guy is. She invited him to join the Tianyuan company and then she could give him whatever he wanted. Ian thanks Bai for the offer, but he likes being in his current job. The girl immediately lies back on the bed, she noticed that due to the recent incident, the female side of Luo is leaving back for Europe. Ian added with a smile that he couldn't do it that easily, because he still has a gift for them. While on the roof, Law told his sister that their helicopter would be there in 10 minutes. Law lowered his head and believed that it was he or his sister who was to blame, Miss Luo stated that it was because of Ian that they fell and got hurt. The girl was not going to give up so easily, Law understood that they would not be able to defeat him, he was wondering what his sister's plan was. At this moment, Ian goes to the roof behind the Transformers and wonders who called him, Law was outraged by the guy's presence. Ian added that he heard that the couple was leaving so he came to give a gift, Law demanded that he not approach them. At this moment, a long sword appears from behind Ian's back. Ian manages to block it with his watch. Ian bounces back and in front of his face, an unknown man appears. The man introduces himself as an elder of the Great Sword sect. Ian noticed that the guy hid his presence, he understood that his subscriber was quite powerful. The man, without further ado, decides to attack Ian again. The man swings his sharp blade at the guy. In the last seconds, Ian manages to return once again. Jumping back, Ian lands next to the cliff. Another man appears in front of the guy, who is also another elder. The men block Inya's passage for further retreat. Miss Luo noted with a grin that Ian would die today and Grandma was right that the plan would work. Miss Luo believed that they could take revenge on Ying because of the second brother, Law didn't understand how the girl knew that she was involved in the death of her second brother. Ying makes his way through the couple, noticing that the women of the Luo family should not be underestimated. Ying hits Miss Luo in the stomach and falls to the ground for something. 
Ian also grabs Law's hand, Law demanded that Ian stop. The swordsman quickly introduces himself and hits Law with his sword, which the guy did not expect at all. The second side swordsman also attacks another one, adding that Ian will not be able to escape. Ian decides to jump off a cliff. Ian says goodbye to everyone and wishes to meet them soon. Ian mockingly waves goodbye to them. One of the men of critical blood, thrown back by martial arts, the second man helps Law and the girl. Ian manages to break into one of the windows of the buildings, the guy believed that if he had just a moment more he could have fallen. Ian notices that the current situation is more dangerous than he could have expected. Ian decides to ask Mercury for help. Ian and Song sit in a restaurant and have dinner, the waiter explains that an unknown man has arrived outside to see President Song and wants to meet him. Inya is interested in this man and allows him to enter, Song wonders if Ian really has friends in Beijing. A man enters the room and immediately states that their elder gave the guy a couple of words that the man was going to voice. The man begins his monologue by saying that the guy has harmed his students many times and now Ian must come and bow. Ian asks with a grin what will happen if the guy doesn't come, the man adds that otherwise his friends could get hurt. The man reminds that Ian has quite a lot of friends in Nancheng. Sun gets up from the table and tells the man to calm down, because otherwise she is going to call the police. Song explains to the guy that he shouldn't go because of Qinghua, the girl planned to go herself, Ian explains that the girl misunderstood. Ian adds that this has nothing to do with Qinghua, they came for him. The guy remembers that then Luo Wang forced Luo Xiao, who loves Ian, to choose between her family and love, and in the end Luo chose family because of which she was forced to leave. Ian noticed that he is now much stronger than before and Luo Wang is worried that the guy will take revenge on the female side of the Luo family in the future. Ian declares that he will not allow the girl to be offended, because he has an assistant, the girl did not understand which assistant she was talking about, Ian adds that his assistant will arrive soon. At this moment, a fashionable guy enters the hall and greets his old friend. Ian kicks the guy out the door and declares that he's taking too long. The guy comes in next and asks Ian to forgive him, because it was really difficult for him to find a guy. The guy wonders why Ian left the last time they met and didn't write anymore, Ian demands that the guy unhook, because he hates being hugged. The guy notices Sun standing there, calling the girl a princess, the guy asks if the girl is a princess. Ian hits the guy on the head, declaring that he made a mistake about the man, the guy starts apologizing again. The guy comes closer and introduces himself to Sun as Mercury, calling himself Yin's older brother, the girl also greets the guy and introduces herself by name. Ian asks for the help of Seven Mercury for one matter, the guy declares that he is ready to go through thick and thin for Ian. Mercury reminds him that he is not dependent on his family and is ready to help personally, Ian adds that he understands the guy's difficulties. Ian states that he can temporarily use Qinghua's money as collateral, the guy offers payment for the work done, as well as a railway in southern Africa. Mercury recalls that he constantly begged the guy, but he did not give him the railroad, the guy asks to leave this to his family. The next day, Mercury greets Ian again and notes that everything was ready at his request. Mercury noted that, after leaving the world of mercenaries, he could not find the guy for a long time, and if the guy wants to do this, then all the mercenaries will know about Yin's location. Ian noted that his identity was revealed after he met the female side of the Luo family. Ian slowly heads towards the sect up the steps. At the head of the sect was a master, the man called Ian a kid who dared to make an appointment with him, the man demanded that the guy bow his head for all his mistakes. Ian doesn't understand why the man started yelling at him so loudly. The man, without waiting, immediately attacks the guy. At this moment, one rocket flies towards the sect, which is noticed by the rest of the sect members. There was a loud crash behind the master, followed by a puff of smoke. At this moment, one of the mercenaries learns that Razor is currently in China. The woman states on the phone that she saw Razor with her own eyes. The green-haired man thanks the woman for the information, adding that once society knows this, many will want to come to China. The girl standing behind the mercenary wonders if the guy is going to tell everyone about this, because the hearts and minds of the Demon Alliance will be in anticipation of this. The man noticed that the girl had previously been in love with the Razor, the girl stated that sooner or later she and the Razor would be tamed like the mercenary. At this point, Ian continued to fight using smoke bombs. Ian called his opponent impudent and continued to throw knives at him. In a moment, Ian takes out a gun and aims at the man. 
The man was amazed at this outcome, he could not even move. At this moment, the head of the great sword sect comes out to him and cuts the bullet in half. Ian was amazed that the swordsman was able to cut through the bullet so easily. All the sectarians noticed that their leader had arrived, the man did not look outraged at the devastation in his absence. The man asks what happened during the retreat and why the mountain gates became like this. All the sectarians immediately decide to blame Ian for what happened, after all, it was the guy who blew up the gate. The man takes out his blade and decides to atone for the guy's guilt with his blood. Ian, not wanting to continue listening to the long monologue, shoots back. The master immediately dodges the bullet while simultaneously cutting the others to reduce the distance. The man gets close enough to strike, Ian noticed that the sect leader was really strong. The master decides to use his technique on the guy. Ian realizes that he was unable to repel with his technique. The master calls the guy's technique a pulsating hand, also talking about his Ian gang technique. Ian decides to continue running away from the man, because he was frightened by the power of the sect leader. The man did not want to let the guy go, so he tried to attack him from behind. Ian blocks the man's blow at the last moment. Ian immediately begins to bleed from his mouth. A hail of bullets rains down on the man, causing him to take a step back. The man demands Ian to tell him where old man Ian Gang is. The hail of bullets continued to fall on the man, causing him to gradually retreat. The elder brother came to Yin's aid and helped him get up and run away from the forest. Help arrived at the head of the sect and wanted to help the head defeat Yin. Yin's brother decides to activate the explosives prepared in advance, causing an explosion. The head of the sect was outraged, because most of his subordinates suffered. The action moves to the Nanching National Security Branch. The agent explained that Yin had fled back to Nanching and that was why he was here. At this moment, a shuriken flies from behind, to which one of the workers immediately reacted. The man pulls out a gun and begins to threaten the unknown woman. The unknown rarely turns into a log, the agent realizes that this was an island nation spoofing technique. All agents are immediately suspicious of helping the head, the man asks the injured agent to be taken to the hospital immediately. Ian dials his master and explains that he is having problems, old man Ian states that he is very busy at the moment. Ian explains that he has met several sects who want to obtain his techniques, the old man adds that if he leaves the mountain, then the skin of all the cultists will itch. Ian adds that all the sects have some kind of relationship with the old man and the master needs to deal with them. Old man Ian explains that the technique that Ian constantly uses is called my Tong Fan and it is the rarest among all. Ian asks, since the master was in the Qin dynasty, how old he is. Old man Ian claims that he was able to defeat ten sects at the same time, Ian noted that in those days his master was invincible. Ian wonders why the master has been hiding in the mountains for decades all this time, adding that the Tao Wai is aimed specifically at cultivation. Old man Ian immediately tells who Tao Woody was and adds that the guy will soon find out when his master will leave the mountain. Ian asks not to hang up on his master and save his student, the master demands that the guy, with the help of his tips, be able to find a way to defeat all the sects. Ian looks into the distance and understands the gravity of the situation. The action moves to Mount Ame in the meeting hall. One of the masters in the hall noted that they managed to find Yin's hideout in Nanchang, the men planned to send elite disciples of various sects to him. One of the masters clarifies whether Yin is really a student of the Mai sect. The great sword master confirms, explaining that he personally fought Yin and cannot leave any doubt. Miss Luo believed that the great sword sect gave the guy the opportunity to prepare, which was not the best decision. The woman stated that together, all ten of their sects would definitely be able to catch Ian. At this moment, Ian was fighting with an unknown girl on the street. Ian wondered what the girl was doing here. The girl lowered her scarf and greeted the guy, the girl managed to find out where Ian was. The girl grabbed her shoulder, Ian was interested in whether it hurt too much, the girl explained that the bullet hit the shoulder but did not hit the bone. Ian comes closer and reminds him that the girl was previously everything to him, the guy planned to keep the girl with him, because he would still need the girl's help. Ian hugs the girl with a request to leave the world of mercenaries with him. At this moment, an expensive car arrives on the threshold of the house from which a red heel appears. Chu gets out of the car, noticing, that even if Ian had a chance, he won't be able to fly away now. Ian notes, that the time has come and the mercenaries have already arrived. A large number of mercenaries gathered near the entrance to the guy's apartment, they looked intently at Ian. 
all the mercenaries began to introduce themselves one by one. The mercenaries were from different families and they all wanted to take revenge on the guy for various insults. Dao Wu, who stood closest, called himself a great sword and wanted to take revenge on the guy more than anyone else. Yin noticed that the guy was a great sword and knew how to intimidate, but the guy planned to blow up their gate again. The man did not believe the guy's words, he demanded that he stop bluffing, because Yin didn't even have a weapon with him. Xiong noticed that since the guy ruined the gate in a vile way, he violated the rules of Chinese martial arts. The girl invited the guy to return and bow out with them. At this moment, Yin's friend wants to attack the girl who was robbing her, Yin asks the girl to calm down. Yin whispers to the girl that she should go to the address and tell Mercury everything. The girl disappears in an instant, immediately heading out on assignment, Cheong decides to let the girl go, because it was Yin who was interested in her. The sword master decides to be the first to test what the guy is capable of. The man draws his sword and attacks the unarmed Yin. At this moment, in one of the buildings, old man Yin finishes another game and decides to return home. Old man Yin noticed that he was very ashamed of the guy. Old man Yin realized that he had not come down from the mountain for approximately several decades. Old man Yin wanted to remind everyone of the final defeat of all sects. At this point, Yin continued to fight various mercenaries at the same time. Yin takes out her knife and begins trying to stab nearby enemies. One of the mercenaries decides to use Dian Can, the Island of Thorns on Yin. In turn, Yin also applies Dian Can, Island of Thorns to all mercenaries. The mercenary who owned this technique was greatly amazed by this situation. The man didn't understand how Yin knew his sex technique. Yin noted in his thoughts that from early childhood he had studied the techniques of different sects and this was not surprising. The guy was getting closer and closer to Cheong, Yin added that the girl had bothered him many times and now the guy wanted revenge. Yin tries to hit the girl. Chu manages to block the blow with his blade. At this moment, several more mercenaries attack him from Yin's back. Yin turns around sharply and deals with the attacking mercenaries. The mercenary lying at his feet tried to tell Yin that he had no right to kill Chu, because she was the daughter of the head of the Amei faction. Yin takes the girl by the collar and does not understand what the problem is that the girl is the daughter of the head of Amei. Yin believed that the Amei faction was just a fake and the guy planned to get rid of Amei to take out his anger. At this moment, old man Yin reaches the sect gate, the sect leader didn't understand how the old man dared to stand in front of him. Old man Yin suggests that all the sects have united to intimidate his disciple, the man planned to help his student. The sect leader stated that he was just playing with old man Yin's disciple in order to lure him out. The head of the five poison sect declares that it is today that old man Yin will die. All the mercenaries lined up behind the head of the five poison sect. All the sects were ready to attack Grand Old Man Yin at the same time. The head of the Great Sword sect decides to attack with his knife with his finger. Old Man Yin calmly applies his pulsating hand. Old Man Yin easily repels the sect leader's attack. Yin mockingly noted that at 70 years old the head was one step behind, but after 10 years he was now three steps behind. The head of the Great Swords was very angry at such disrespect for himself. The man was blazing with anger at being in the center of all the mercenaries. The head of the great swordsman decides to use his ability. At this moment, small twigs take away the knives from all the mercenaries one by one. The men simultaneously send many swords towards old man Yin. The head of the great swords noted that it was today that old man Yin should be killed. A strong explosion occurred in the place where old man Yin was standing. Old man Yin lands on one of the roofs behind the chapter. The head noted that old man Yin used Taiji Shenton. Old man Yin continued to fight with the head of the great swords. At that moment, the head suddenly spits out blood, which is why he decides to cover his mouth. The head of the five poisons also did not want to stand by and decides to attack Yin at the same moment. The girl attacks old man Yin while he stood carefree in front of them. Old man Yin begins to deal with the mercenaries one by one. Old Man Yin states that he had previously divided the Luo family into two sides and the man warned them not to return to China. Old Man Yin suggests that the guy has memory problems. Old Man Yin is the only one left standing, the man declares that if they decide to continue, he will blow up the entire sect with rockets. At this moment, a guy rises to the top and announces that the security service has arrived. The girl on the ground believed that the guy would not be able to resist after the police arrived. 
All the special forces continue to surround the Great Sword sect, the men decide to arrest everyone present. The man orders, grab the girl and her students. The agent suspects that the woman may have contacts with people from behind the border. The agent also greets old man Ian. The agent added that one of his old friends is currently having problems. Ian remembers the first meeting with the old man, when they attacked the unknown man. There was a strong smoke screen on the battlefield. The men demanded that the man not move, otherwise they were ready to shoot at the unknown person. A man emerges from a puff of smoke asking him to go further into the forest for firewood, the man took the entire regiment to a safe place and gave them food. The man trained men for a long time and taught them some techniques to survive on the battlefield. The man was amazed that among the military personnel there would be a guy who became the founding marshal. Old man Ian ends his story by adding that while the man is around Ian, no need to worry about safety. Ian says with a smile that he doesn't think the master really has that kind of support, the guy was interested in why the old man left. The man explains that the guy actually has an older sister who inherited 80% of his abilities while the guy inherited at least 10%. Ian, trying to cool the tea, wonders where his sister is at the moment. The man with a serious face declares that he has already killed her. Old man Ian states that he still feels uneasy after picking up the guy. The man puts the book in front of Ian, explaining that this is a book with skills that the guy is very poor at. The man offers the guy to continue practicing or return to him on the mountain. Ian notes in her thoughts that she no longer plans to return back to the mountains. Actions are transferred to the company's office. Ian greets all workers, the head of security was no less glad to see his deputy. Lee's boss asks the guy to immediately visit the CEO's office. Ian knocks on the door and then goes into the girl's office. Song pointed out that Ian is a major shareholder and should choose this for his office, the guy did not want anyone to know about his activities. Ian takes the girl by the chin, noting that since he is a personal bodyguard, he asks to put his desk in the girl's office. After a moment, Ian sits down in her brand new chair, noticing this. Ian was glad to have such a table, because now he was really comfortable. Son, sitting far away, thanked the guy for the work done because now they had become an independent company, the girl explains that they now need a new secretary. Ian states that he has a recommendation from a girl. Sinera, standing opposite Sun, asks again if Sun wants her to become her secretary. Sun calmly names the conditions of further work, as well as the salary. The girl thanks for the offer and instantly agrees to such a tempting offer. Sun noticed that everything was thanks to Yin's recommendations and it was he who did everything. Sinera came closer to the guy and also thanked him for everything he did for her. Everyone in the office was discussing who Mr. Ian was, everyone wanted to please him. Sun reminds them that the largest meeting of executive directors will be held in Europe and they need to attend this meeting, the girl kindly agrees with the general director. Ian also hears this and decides to go with the girls. Ian decides to stop Sinera and explains the danger of being in Europe, the girl explains that she is aware of this. Sinera thanks Ian again for such a kind service. The next day, the plane, along with Ing Song and Sinera, departs first class to Europe. When Ian Jio left China, he went to the Song, who removed the seal from himself and he is again a waking beast. Among the crowd, Song slowly approached, accompanied by her bodyguard and secretary. There was also a girl standing among the crowd, she noticed that the mercenary king was walking with the princess again. The action moves to a mansion in Belgium. The guy sitting in the car notices that customs reported that in half a day they blocked more than a hundred mercenaries from entering the country, but there are exceptions. At this moment, Ian, along with Song and Xianera, enter the building. Sinera was amazed at the scale of such a meeting. A large number of different people gathered in the hall, they looked intently at the incoming couple. Xianera felt a little nervous from people's stares. The agent at the entrance noted that the mansion is currently one of the most dangerous places in the world. Ian publicly declares that if the people in the hall do not want to die, then they should get out of here today, otherwise Ian was ready to give everyone a rebuff. All the mercenaries began to look even more closely at Ian and the girls. The faces of the mercenaries suddenly changed to happy ones, because everyone understood that in front of them was the great king of mercenaries. Everyone rushed towards the guy, calling themselves fans, Many wanted to take a photo with the great mercenary. Without another word, Ian punches the guy closest to him in the chest. The rest of the mercenaries were amazed at this reaction, because the guy flew several meters away. 
Ian explains his actions by saying that he does not allow anyone he meets to get too close to him. Ian adds that next time anyone who comes close will be immediately eliminated. Yin's elder brother was waiting for them on the second floor when they met, noting that although Ian had left the world of mercenaries, he still remained the most popular and famous. Ian assumes that someone is deliberately leaking his location, the guy also noted that the invitations to all people were for a reason. Ian understands that this will not be the only surprise he will prepare for him. Ian invites the girl to go to their rooms and meet later, everyone agrees with the guy's decision. Ian enters his room and observes an unknown girl in the room. Ian wonders how the girl was able to get to him, wondering if the girl is afraid that she might be discovered, Ian understood who was in front of him. The girl begins to take off her mask, explaining that Mercury does not care about his safety and that is why she arrived. Ian notices that a huge number of agents are watching him and it will be deplorable if they find out that there was a female mercenary in his room. The girl opens her case revealing a large number of weapons, the girl invites the guy to take the weapon when he decides to eat. Ian and the girl go out for a walk, the mercenary continued to monitor the situation around the perimeter. The girl suddenly notices strange people behind her. The girl jumps back, realizing that she was attacked by ninjas, the ninja clan strikes simultaneously at the place where the girl was. All the ninjas declare that they must kill the girl at any cost, sharply attacking her. The girl manages to block the attack of one of the attackers with her blade. Several more mercenaries attack the girl from behind. At this moment, a knife on a chain flies towards the attackers. All mercenaries receive damage in the chest area with a scream. Ian stands next to the girl, noticing that White has teamed up with the ninja king to attack. Ian picks up the sword that fell from the previous ninja. The guy, with a sharp movement of his hand, injures another attacker. The mercenary suddenly turns into a log, Ian realizes that it was a bait and asks the girl to be more careful because there were several Jounin here. People nearby supported Ian, calling him their idol, Ian requires people to stand back and not approach. All the people were furious, they wanted to help the guy. With one swing, the ninja neutralizes half the entire crowd. Ian realizes that he managed to eliminate only half of the mercenaries, ninjas suddenly surround the guy. Ian puts his hand out in front of him. Ian carries out a series of blows, neutralizing the ninja one after another. The remaining ninja used an unusual technique on people, which Ian himself noticed. Ian decides to attack the ninja with her knife. Ian enters into battle with the unknown man, but he easily repels the guy's blow, which Sun also notices. Ian also notes that the attacker did not have the skills of ninjas, but of island people. The man did not understand how his blade began to collapse under the pressure of Ian. Ian noted with mockery that the guy's blade would need to be sharpened, Ian also takes out a gun. Ultimately, Ian manages to defeat all of her attackers. Ian calmly leaves, wiping his hands, he did not understand how he could notice, noting that law and order in Brussels needs to be strengthened and they would have helped him deal with these earlier. A car was parked not far from the scene. The men inside were outraged by the incident. Ian takes out a cigarette and lights one, trying to relax. Ian raises one hand and invites the rest of the mercenaries to fight with him and protect the hotel. Various mercenaries are stationed around the hotel. The hotel owner was amazed at this situation, because they are all bandits and there is no law for them. There were also a large number of assorted mercenaries at the entrance. Ian, while in the room, continued to talk with his old friend, the girl believed that in fact the unknown people were desperately pursuing her and not because he was a traitor. The girl embarrassedly adds that she is ready to tell this only to Inya, the girl is counting, that the ninja and he crossed the ocean in order to study martial arts. The girl adds that they soon managed to find out about the origin and find out all the secrets. Ian points out that it was an old-fashioned story about a beauty saving a hero. Ian believed that the woman saved the Japanese and killed many Chinese practitioners. The girl added that the woman framed Fu San and angered the master. Ian wonders what happened next in this story. Ian realizes that ancestors he and Jia he personally divided the scroll into two parts. At that moment, unknown people knocked on the door, introducing themselves as the police. Ian heads towards the exit, declaring that he will make both he and Jia he responsible for everything that happened. All the main mercenaries gather in the hall, which Ian himself notices. The hotel owner tells police that he was very scared by what happened. Yin's older brother, standing behind, noticed a feminine scent from Ian. Sinera also felt the female west from Ian, 
calling him a pervert. Ian tries to deny this, stating that in the shower he used perfume from the hotel, because he spent the whole time in the room and could not find the girl. Having finished making excuses, Ian hits his older brother on the cheek with all his might. At this moment, an unknown man approaches from behind and asks him not to go too far, because he is not afraid to change. The man touches Yin's shoulder, adding that their place is Yin's immediate task. Yin turns around sharply, paying attention to the unknown man. Without further ado, Yin hits the guy in the stomach, sending him flying into the wall. The man lands abruptly with his back against the wall, causing blood to come out of his mouth. All the police suddenly surround Yin, demanding that he surrender immediately, an unknown man asks the police to put down their weapons. Ian lifts the guy up, the man hopes that their cooperation from the police will not cause trouble. At this moment, a luxurious villa stands on a deserted island. A man was sitting on the couch watching TV, studying the latest news. The man noted that he had not seen Ian for the last few years and this was a gift for him. The man immediately decides to call the guy. Ian picks up the phone in bewilderment, the man demands that he not dare hang up. The man noted with a smile that he knew where Ian was at the moment. Ian added that perhaps today's ceremony was too welcoming that his friends almost died. The guy decides to end the conversation and throw the phone on the nearest nightstand. Ian lies down on the bed and mulls over the recent events in her head. Ian recalls various other moments from the past day. Ian notices the luxurious building near the signing ceremony took place. Ian was really excited about this ceremony. Returning home, Ian asks if their flight is at noon, Sun stated that their flight was scheduled for tomorrow and the CEO bought a hotel where they would stay until tomorrow and this would be their first step in Europe. Ian, getting out of the taxi, dials a friend and asks him to immediately help cook. Ian notices an unknown person hiding behind a trash can. At this moment, an unknown man, sitting at the table and reading a book, asks the girl to come to him. The girl slowly approaches. The girl hugs the guy and reminds him that all this time the guy was planning to defeat Razor. The man abruptly takes the girl by the hand. Without further ado, the guy gets up and heads towards the exit, he was irritated by the girl's company. The girl stated that she betrayed Razor for the sake of the guy, she was enraged by how the guy treated her. The guy states that everyone does what they have to do, the girl was outraged by the guy's behavior. At this moment, Ian had already found out who was hiding behind the trash can, taking the girl by the pigtail, he demanded that the others get out too. All three, standing in front of Ian, decide to introduce themselves, calling themselves fans. At this moment, Ian easily releases her blade towards the girl's face, causing her hair to fall out of her bangs. Ian abruptly returns the knife from his hand. Patting the girl on the head, he explains that in the real world of mercenaries, this all happens in life and this is not the best game for children. A call comes into Yin's phone, causing him to go aside to talk. Yin goes on about her business. The girl grabs the guy by the hand and asks Yin to teach him such masterful skills, the girl wanted to go with the guy. Yin states that it is very difficult to become his students and that first the children will have to pass a difficult test. The action will move to the central streets of Brussels. Yin, being on the roof, noticed on the phone that everything was ready and they were ready to begin implementing the plan. At that moment, a small flash occurs in the sky. Many rockets begin to fly in a given direction. A powerful explosion was heard in one of the skyscrapers, causing a large ball of smoke to rise in the air. Ian noticed that the enemy he knew acted mercilessly and opened fire with ground-based missiles. Many people under the building are panicking and trying to leave the emergency zone. A loud alarm siren sounds in the building. Ian explains indignantly, that he needed rockets with anesthesia and tear gas and, if possible, not to make so much noise. The guy on the phone reminds us that Ian previously gave preference to these missiles and that's why he fired them. The trio eavesdropping on the DTMC conversation calls Ian cruel. 